everyone. We have a special guest at the tavern today, Mr. Fear the Gear himself, Spencer Slade. What's going on, man? Man, I can't. I'm so excited to be on the show. I really appreciate you guys for having me on, and I can't wait to talk. Oh, yeah, man. We're pumped to have you on, man. We're big fans, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun getting in and being able to talk to you about everything about yourself, man. Oh, absolutely. You already know, man. Anytime I get a chance to talk wrestling, I mean, I, I feel so much better. Oh. That's yeah, us too, man. <laughs> yeah, man. It's all about wrestling. We're super excited to have you on. Fi finally getting you on here. Um, when Let's take it back to the beginning, man. Were you a fan of pro wrestling early on when you were a kid? Absolutely. Uh, I actually didn't uh, start watching wrestling until uh, about 2002. The first match I ever saw was uh, WrestleMania 19, uh, Kurt Angle versus Brock Lesnar for the uh, WWE Championship uh, in 2003. And I was uh, eight, about seven, eight years old at the time. And uh, ever since I ever since I saw that match, I've been hooked ever since. That was my first memory of wrestling. That's a great first match. Such a good I match, know, right? Yeah. Was Who? that the Was that the Brock where he did the suplex or not the suplex uh, flip? <laughs> Yeah, he did the shooting star and almost broke his neck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so who no, were some of your guys, was, man? Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. And I remember I remember the next day uh 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 we had uh this uh trampoline at school and I wanted to do a shooting star at uh school on the trampoline because as a kid, everything you see you want to do, you know. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, man. So uh, did were you did you like Lesnar, Kurt Angle? Who were some of your guys when you were a kid? So about so when I started watching in 2003, I was automatically hooked with uh, uh, Kurt Angle. He was my guy, and then from about the uh, 04 all the way up until now, it was uh, Randy Orton. I mean, Randy Orton's I idolized Randy Orton as a kid, man. He was my all time favorite wrestler. That's a guy I try to model myself after in the ring. But uh, it's always been Kurt Angle and, and uh, uh, Kurt Angle at the start, and then ever since it's been Randy Orton. That's been my all time favorite wrestler. That man, what what a wrestler! And it's crazy too, man, because like your your body type almost I could see Randy Orton in in a little bit of your style and your body type. <laughs> that's the crazy thing too. I always get a uh, I always get a lot of comparisons to Randy Orton, and I mean I, that's awesome because I mean I love I love Randy Orton, and there's no better way as a wrestler being uh, measured to somebody like Randy Orton who's that damn good to where you always have to be on top of your game because you know Randy Orton, he's he he's he, he's so damn good. He's so he's everything in his game is is flawless. He's so fluid. Yeah. It's a funny story. So I idolized Randy Orton so much to the point that as like a kid, I had like all of his posters, all of his shirts that came out, and then probably around like 08, 09, when he had that uh, storyline with the McMahons, which I thought was one of the best storylines ever as a heel yeah <laughs> i would literally like walk down the hallways in the school like randy orton went down the wing because like i i was i was so and I, I was so into randy orton i thought he was the coolest guy ever <laughs> i love that <laughs> man awesome. he had that means that mean smirk on his face i would try to do that when i would play sports i mean he was uh dude i was i was if there's somebody else that was a bigger randy orton fan during that time i want to i, I want to meet you because <laughs> I don't think you're gonna find anybody else. All like, about the Viper. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't sound like there's another bigger fan out there, so I think you might have that title. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I, that's uh, that works for me, you know. <laughs> so when when you were coming up, you know, playing other sports, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you know you were an outside linebacker in football. Yeah, so uh, people have this thing. They uh, they think because since I wear the headgear that I was like I was an All-American collegiate wrestler, but it's actually the complete opposite. I was actually an All-American football player, and it's a kind of it's a kind of funny story because I get a lot of people try to compare me to uh, 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 Kurt Angle, but uh, then I tell them, yeah, you know what? I wasn't you know a, a wrestler. I was a guy, I was a football player. Um, I played every single sport, man: football, basketball, baseball, you name it. But uh. I feel like for me personally, football definitely of all the sports helps prepare you the most for uh, pro wrestling because you're because you're hitting people at the end of the day you're hitting people. Yeah, yeah. What What'd you like about being a linebacker, man? It just seems like you're head hunting. Oh, that, that's the whole thing, you know. I just it's just it's just uh, making contact, you know. Because uh, when I was watching uh, when I was watching pro wrestling as a kid, um, you know, 
uh, John Cena played football. You know, The Rock played football. So in my mind, I thought, you know what? If I'm going to be a great pro wrestler, I need to play football because a lot of those guys played football. So, and also too, it's just the whole physicality thing because you know, in our in our in our pro wrestling, uh, you know, it's 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 physical. You gotta you gotta you know you gotta be able to take stuff here and there. So football definitely for me was a. Uh, and if you think about it, man, there's no greater feeling in the world than putting somebody on their ass. It's <laughs> such a good feeling. You get this crazy, <laughs> and, and like football, you get this crazy adrenaline feeling. The same thing when you go out through the curtain. That's that's awesome. So you said, you know, you looked at people like Cena and The Rock and they played football. So you you had it in your mind to be a pro wrestler even before you started playing those sports. Exactly. And that's a, and, 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 and that's where my story leads to this. So um, sometimes... <laughs> This is a funny story, but sometimes I wish that I was born and I lived in the UK. That way I could start, that way I could start wrestling when I was like 12 or 13. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, you know, I had um I had always done well in sports. And then, you know, obviously when I started getting scholarships to play, uh, to, to play football in, in college, you know, I kind of had to, I kind of had to, you know, put my pro wrestling career on hold because I had the opportunity to get a free education and, you know, go play college sports. But there was times where like, I wanted to start training to be a wrestler the, the day I turned 16, you know, but obviously your parents tell you, Hey, you need to go to school and do, pursue that route first. Uh, but yeah, man, there's pro wrestling has always been my very, very first passion. It's that's always am- been pro wrestling. Yeah. That's amazing. The point where when I was in college, it, this is, I know this is going to sound weird, but the more successful I got in college, the, uh, the more that I lost passion for the actual sport of football, because I wanted to be a wrestler so bad, but at the same time, I made a promise to myself and my parents that I would pursue football as far as I could. But man, I would be lying to you if I told you that when I was, when I should have been watching football, I was watching pay-per-views on the network. So (laughs) wrestling is always number one, man. That's great. So, so you're playing football, you're doing all this in college, you're being very successful in it. So where was the switch where you said, Okay, I'm done with football. Now I'm going to train wrestling. So I had um I had like my own pro day, which is you know where you're doing all these drills in front of scouts, and then I had opportunities to go uh, try out for like a, uh, a a bunch of different Canadian football league teams, and then I went out and did like the uh, they have this big national uh, combine for uh, the Canadian football league out in San Diego. Um, I did that, and then uh. After that, I would say about like a week after the uh, 2018 NFL draft went by, and I didn't I didn't hear anything. And at that and at that point, I was so mentally checked out of football that um, I wasn't even I wasn't even thinking about football. I I knew that the minute that I realized I wasn't going to play at the next level, that was the second I was going to start pro wrestling training. And I and I started pro wrestling training uh, July of uh, 2018. So that was the first time I uh, went to school to learn how to be a wrestler. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy. You're, you're so young in the game and you've done quite a bit so far. Yeah. Um, what's it been like? Cause you, you started your training at IWC in Pittsburgh, correct? Yes, sir. Correct. Yeah. Um, the, uh, IWC wrestling school, which is, uh, right here in Pittsburgh with the, uh, promotion called IWC, which is, uh, in my opinion, probably one of the best indie companies out there, you know, besides your biggest companies. I mean, uh, you know, we have, uh, Elias in the DWEs from IWC. I mean, you have, uh, um, DJ Z who's in the, uh, um, Joe Aquin wild day in the, uh, Phantasma group. He's from IWC. You got Britt Baker and Wardlow and AEW from IWC. So yeah, IWC is a uh, is a is 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 a, is a is a very very good indie promotion to get started, and that's where I was trained. What what was those early training days like? I know, I know you're an athlete, but like, where was it different? How was it different compared to like the other athletics that you had started? That's a good question. Uh, the the, uh, the big difference is is uh, probably uh, having to uh, um, control your balance. I mean, people don't realize when you when you step in a wrestling ring, I mean, you got to be, you, you know, you have to have good balance so you don't trip and fall or hurt, or hurt yourself or somebody else. But to be honest with you, you know, it, pro wrestling for me was, it's all, all I've ever wanted to do since I was eight years old. So the day that I started training, I was so mentally prepared that nothing or nobody was going to, was going to stop me from getting to where I want to go. I was just so confident and uh, my wrestling training was exactly what I thought it would be. You know, the first couple of days, 
it's going to be a little bit challenging because you've never, you know, done a front row or, 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 or took a back bump. But after that, man, I was just, I love wrestling so much that I knew I was going to pick it up naturally. That's all. It seems like you had a, a will to get it and your mind was just set on it regardless. Well, it just, it sounds like you were a pro wrestler that played football. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> That's at, you know what I actually told uh, somebody that I told I told somebody yeah you know what I was actually a pro wrestler long before I played football it's just that I didn't actually step foot in a ring to be a pro wrestler <laughs> football you know so what's are those early days of training yeah you know what's it like as far as you know you got the you're an athlete you've got the physical side it's coming to you a little easier probably what about the psychological aspect of, of yeah. a match. Yeah, that was uh, so learned, and and I, and I and you know obviously in wrestling school you know you yeah you're taught like the whole mental side of wrestling which is you know figuring out you know how you're gonna put together a match uh, the psychology uh, how to how to get the fans involved you know all the uh, all the stuff that most wrestling fans uh, don't uh, don't understand or or don't pay attention to you know simple as learning how to uh, do all the uh, all the moves all that kind of stuff because. You know, I had gotten all the mental reps by watching on TV, so I already knew in my mind what a power bomb should look like, but I just never physically done it. So once you get those couple reps at moves, then it's it's all at the end of the day, it's all muscle memory. You know, when you when you repeatedly do your moves, you start to develop that muscle memory. So it's just it's just natural. You just body your body just knows how to how to give and take. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, so no, go ahead, John. I was just going to say creating, okay, you're, you're in training. Yep. You, you're starting to do independent shows. Yep. Yep. Cre creating this character with the right. headgear. I, I, I'm right. a, a long time fan. Right. I love the headgear. Uh, it reminds me of the Steiner brothers, Rick Steiner. Right. Love that. I think it's unique to you. No one's doing it today. Um, how did the headgear come about and just creating your character in general? <laughs> That's a great question, man. <laughs> here's another here's another great story here. So, um, yeah, the headgear to me. Um, so, what I, uh, in wrestling, I look at all like the people there. They all have uh, they all have some kind of uh, I don't maybe it's called like market value or or something that they're that they're that's that that uh, that they stand out. So I'm thinking, you know what do I have to do to uh, stand out? And um, I started wearing, I thought about, you know, the wrestler's headgear. Cause I think, you know, it stands out. I wrestle more of like a shoot style, like a hardcore suplex style. And I figured the headgear goes with it. Um, and then also too, the reason why I wore the headgear is because also to protect my hearing aids, because when I would actually take a flat back bump, my my hearing aids would kind of pop out of my ears because that's just, you know, when you hit the, when you hit the mat, it, it, it's impact. There's not much your body can do about it. So, right. And I also wore the headgear to kind of protect my hearing aids since I got to wear them to hear. Um, and then I just came up with the nickname fear the gear. You know, I'm thinking of what can I do with my headgear? Can I grab it? Can I flex? Can I, what can I do with it to get, cause you got to have your signature pose and wrestling. Right. Have right. Something. Yeah. And then, it just started developing from there. And then I started uh, watching like, um, like, like, uh, uh, like a Randy Orton or, or a Chris Benoit. I started watch, studying their facials, how to have like a mean face, how to uh, like a ruthless aggression. Like I, I, when, when somebody asked me who's Spencer Slade, I tell him he's just in a, an intense, ruthless, ag aggressive suplex machine. That's just, that's just, because that's naturally who I feel like, you know, I, when I was on the football field, I just, I just felt like a ruthless machine. And I, and I asked myself, how can I, how can I translate that into the wrestling ring? Because the best characters in wrestling are the, are, are the guys themselves times 10. Right. You don't want to have, you don't want to be somebody that you're not, because then you're having to play a character, which is not what, not the, what was going to work for me. Yeah. It's just, you turned up the 10, man. Yeah. Yeah. And I also too, you know, um, I always thought too, you know, obviously wearing, uh, you know, cause I like to do a lot of like, like technical wrestling. So when I wear the headgear, you know, people, people think, Oh, you know what? He knows how to do the, you know, the wrestling kind of stuff, which, uh, which I do. So I like to pull that out, pull that out, you know, every once in a while. And then another guy too, that wears headgear is, uh, uh Josh Alexander from impact. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Him Love and I him. are the only two guys that wear headgear, and um, I've, I, I've, I've wrestled him before. I've talked to him all the time, and he's a big fan too. So, um, I think it's pretty cool that you got two badass guys that wear headgear because I could try to look at it as like almost like an honor because if he wears headgear, he's a badass, and I got to make sure that I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm holding mine to bargain too because when people see the headgear, they think, okay, you know what, this guy's a wrestling machine, and that's what I try to try to be. It it definitely does, man. When you see that, you're like, okay, this guy's this guy's legit. Now, I you spoke about it helped you keep your your hearing aids in. Absolutely, yep. So what you know, you you're very uh, open about that on your social media. Absolutely. What what what's it mean to you to be a deaf professional wrestler and kind of be a, an inspiration to to people? Yeah, so when I first started wrestling, I didn't even realize that I would have, like, uh, I didn't even realize that, you know, I was going to inspire people out there. Because at the end of the day, you know, I was just, I was just doing me. I was just focused on, you know, doing what I was doing. Um, but it, looking back, that means, it means the world. Like, you know, like, obviously, you know, I, obviously, you know, my disability, it's not like a, uh, it's, it, you know, it's not like a, a huge physical disability to where it prevents me from doing anything physically. But if I can use this to show somebody else, hey, you know what, if you have a dream, if it, if I can make it and do well, then you could do the same thing. Because, you know, another thing, too, is like when I wear the headgear, there'd be times that where the fans don't see my hearing aids because it's covered up on the headgear. So, right. There would be times that after a match, I would take my headgear off, and people would, would be like, "Oh my god, yeah, I had I had no idea he wore hearing aids. I had no idea he was deaf or this or that." And the reason why is because I never want people. I never use this as a reason for why I can't do something. You know what I'm saying? Like right. I didn't yeah. People will think, "Oh, well, because he, you know, he, he he wears this. He needs. He can't do this, or he needs this special." provision or what you know i try to show people yeah i had this but it doesn't affect me one bit you know? right right that doesn't Something define like that. you as a person or as a as a wrestler say that again that doesn't define you as a person or as a wrestler exactly exactly and then unfortunately in society um there's a lot of people out there that kind of give up on themselves or um you know they, they might have a disability with or something might happen in their life to where they just say screw it I, i'm not going to chase my dream and they have an excuse for this or that you know i always knew what i wanted to be in life and that was to be a wrestler you know i was always picked on because of this and um i would always tell people as a kid oh hey i'm gonna be a pro wrestler and you know they would pick on you and stuff like that because i was a real small kid i was just a little a little scrawny hearing impaired kid like wrestling <laughs> you know <laughs> you know and even when i was in high school my best friend and I were like the only wrestling fans in high school because everybody else thought it was, you know, this or that. So, and also because of that, I always had this huge chip on my shoulder to be the absolute best. You know, I try to be the absolute best wrestler I can be because I know how far I've come. You know, I've known, I, I know what I've been through and that's why I wear the headgear proudly. That's that's awesome, man. I, I love that drive to just, yeah. yeah. The, tri the chip on your shoulder is so important sometimes. Yeah, and and, and 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 sometimes too, you know, I get it. Even on like the independence too, there's some people who think you know I'm very very cocky or this or that. Uh, you know, I can't, I can't change other people's you know perception of me. I just try to be as confident as I can. You know, sometimes, sometimes there's people out there that just because they're not as confident as you, then that's where they want to uh, say negative things or you know or do this or do that. But the biggest thing I preach is uh believing in yourself and being confident. I mean, if you, have, if, if, if you have those two things, I mean, there's nothing you can't accomplish. Absolutely, man. Now, yeah. now the, you know, you, you being a role model as a deaf professional wrestler, is there any, does it elevate your game in any way? Does it hurt or hinder your game in any way? Like what are, what are the pros and cons of it for you? So obviously, you know, I think the pros for me would be, you know, I always would be, um, you know, obviously I'm trying to get signed to the bigger companies. So I think the pros would be, you know, uh, the bigger companies would probably look at me as like, oh, you know, we could, he could probably be like a John Cena, you know, like a role model, baby yep. face, you know, to the right. community or make a wish or Special Olympics. You know, I got a great life story and backstory that can be that absolute can be marketed or 
I always envision in my mind like a WWE show, like I'm having my Spencer Slade headgear being sold at like the merchandise. <laughs> I always envision that in my head, you know? Yeah. That could I, be a I would buy it. I would buy that. I, yeah. I, hey, funny story. So wherever I'm a baby face, you guys remember how Rey Mysterio would come out and put like a mask on a kid when he's a baby face? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I do. But I have like all these extra sets of headgear I just give to a little kid because in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, what can I do differently through my entrance? What can I do that, you know, if I were to do on WWE TV one day would be, would be, uh, would, would get a huge reaction, you know, because right. these companies are publicly traded companies, you know, so they have to answer to all these stakeholders and, 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 and stuff like that. But the cons, honestly, the cons would probably be, um, it hasn't happened yet in a match, but thank God, um, the only cons would be is if, let's say, you know, my hearing aid would uh would shut off during a match, right, or something like that. Um, but even if that were to happen, I mean, I it, obviously I'm not gonna get. You guys obviously know a lot about wrestling, but you know, I pretty much mentally know the match in my head. So even if that were to happen, I would obviously kind of already know where I'm at in the match. Yeah, you, know? you could feel your way through. Absolutely, exactly. That would really be the only con. I can't really think of any other cons. So, so what is what was it that set up your time at AEW? Because during the pandemic, yeah. you, you got you were doing a lot of work at AEW Dark. Was it? Yeah. Was that when I know Brett and Wardlow came to IWC yeah. and kind of scouted you guys out? Were you one of those dudes they brought down? Yeah. So what happened was um. So I started wrestling about. I had my first match in June of June uh, June of 2019. I had my very first match, and that was like six seven months before the pandemic. So I was just starting out, just kind of slowly starting to kind of get like a rise, and then the pandemic hit. And then actually in December of uh, March of 20 uh, March of 2020, I was supposed to try out for the uh, WWE, but obviously that got uh that got canceled because of COVID. And so I have a future tryout at some point coming up. I don't know the exact dates yet, um, but I know that's it. I know that's something that's, you know, out there that I'm, that I'm training for. Um, and then um, right after the pandemic, uh, we, uh, in uh, March of, uh, yeah, 2021, uh, we had a, a big giant show here in IWC. It was a 20th anniversary show. And uh, what, what, so when, let me uh let me take you back. So when Wardlow got signed to AEW, he had told me already, hey, you know, you're on AEW's radar. They know who you are. And mind you, I had only been wrestling for like two, three months at the time. So I knew that I needed to get some matches against names, some bigger matches to uh right. and uh, luckily when the pandemic hit, it kind of shut everything off. So I had some more time to get some bigger matches in and, and get some more experience because you know you gotta you got to get some experience out there. And then Britton Wardlow came to our IWC show in March of 2021. And, uh, they were doing some scouting and, uh, they said, yeah, you know what? You're, uh, you're, 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 you're coming down to Jacksonville. So, um, I went to Jacksonville in April and May. I did like four or five trips down there to do dark matches. And then I just recently did a, uh, uh, dark match when they were in, uh, uh Pittsburgh, uh, two weeks ago. Um, like I said, they like everything they see. If it were up to me, obviously I would sign myself right now and be a dynamite <laughs> right now. Um, but it's, it's the wrestling business, you know, uh, you just gotta be patient, you know, spots open up. You never know when the spot's going to pop up. So, um, right now uh, I'm in, I'm in good, I have a good relationship with them. So I'm just pretty much just, uh, staying ready. Dude, that, I mean, you're you're young in the game and you're already taking trips to Jacksonville. I, I yeah. mean, that's huge, man. It it's takes a big deal. It takes some people a long time. I know. And for yeah, you to be also, on their radar, that's I that's know. impressive. Yeah, and I also it, it, you know, it's it, it's as much as I am, you know, humbled and grateful to have that opportunity, you know, at, at the same time, you know, I, it's confident Spencer Slade talking right here, you know. I I I always knew I would get these opportunities just because I know where I want to be. You know, I know the hard work that I put into this. And I, um, I tell a lot of guys, you know, I read the book, it's called the secret. It's about the law of attraction, you know, right. about, you know, about putting your energy out there and speaking your goals into existence. You know, that's something that's huge to me. I'm always trying to speak my goals into existence. And that was one of them too, because 
I don't know if most people know about me, but I dedicate my life to pro wrestling. You know, I, and I say this proudly, I do not have a life outside of wrestling. You know, I don't, I don't have a social life. I don't have any friends. I don't have a girlfriend right now. I have sacrificed everything to try to get a contract, to try to get to where I want to go. So that's, that's another thing too. You know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just so dialed in on, 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 on trying to get to my goal here in wrestling. I, I love it's when so someone awesome. is that obsessed yeah, I know. with a goal because like, man, I, I think it was on your social media. I saw a picture of you at an old wrestling event and you're just this, you're a little guy. And exactly. to see you now, you've yeah. transformed your body. I mean, you, yeah. you, you're a, you're a body guy. When you come out, you're like, holy shit, this dude puts the work in. Yeah. So when I first started lifting weights was about like 12 or 13. So I'm 25 now. So that's about about 12, 13 years I've been lifting for about now, give or take. Um, when I first started lifting, it wasn't it wasn't lifting for a sport, like lifting for like football season. It was lifting because I wanted to look like the wrestlers on TV. <laughs> yeah. And I it, it, that's that's what it was for, you know, because I grew up watching, you know, Randy Orton, great physique, Kurt Angle, great physique, Triple H, great physique, Batista, great physique, Brock Lesnar, I mean, uh, Cena, you know. All these guys had great physiques, man. And and, and and I told myself as a kid, you know, that's how I have to look. That's how I want to look, you know. So that's 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 why I take – and also, too, I tell guys all the time, nothing bad happens when you're in the best shape of your life physically and mentally. Nothing bad happens from that. Right, right. Why don't you want to get in the best shape of your life? I'm not saying you got to look like me or you have to look like Lex Luger, but, you know, you should – if you're in, if you're in the wrestling business, you should want to look as – is, is TV, sure. I say TV ready as good as you can. Absolutely, man. That that's you. That's what you're selling. Exactly. That, you know, I um, think a lot of it too is uh, what I've noticed in my two years of wrestling is a lot of people, a lot of guys get lazy and they want to try to go like the, uh, they want to try to go like the Kevin Owens route where yeah. you just, you, know, you look like a regular guy and, 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 uh, and wear baggy t-shirts, but they don't realize you're not Kevin Owens, okay? Right, right. <laughs> There's only one Kevin Owens, you know. Even, you know, even some skinnier guys too. Even a guy like Adam Cole, you know, he's really not. He he's not a big guy, but he's just a damn good in ring wrestler. So I tell guys, try to be the best all around wrestler you can be. Best in ring, best at promos, best physically. I mean, just try to be the total package. That's all. I, now I want to get back to AEW in a second, but I yep. had to ask because. I see your promos. You cut great promos, but how you you also work on at IWC and some of the independents. You also work with Justin Labar, who I, I'm a be, <laughs> oh God, big man. fan of. He he's he's okay. on Busted Open Radio. I yep. I I yep. listen to Justin. Uh, what's it like? How did you get linked up with Justin Labar? So um, now at IWC, now I'm, now I'm a heel right now at IWC, which I'm having, you know, I'm having, I'm having an absolute blast being a bad guy. You know, I'm starting to, I'm starting to get that. I'm starting to get that Randy Orton mentality from the main streak. You know? And I've always been a heel when I played sports. Cause I had just, just that chip on your shoulder, just, you know, no pity city, no mercy, just trying <laughs> to get the win. You know, you guys know what I'm saying. Oh yeah. But, yeah. Uh, so Justin Labar managed Woodlow. And you know, obviously, where Wardlow uh, ended up. So, the promoter at uh, Justin Plummer at IWC, when uh, when it was time for me, you know, to make the decision and become a heel, I told him, "Yeah, you know, I think it would be great if you put me with Justin Labar." And um, our very, very first match together was uh, this past July when we uh, main evented the show with Northeast Wrestling when we wrestled Big Cass. Not the, oh uh, yeah, the, I heard about that show. Dude, we had like almost like eight hundred people at that show. That was a that was the biggest indie show I've been a part of. That was awesome. And then from there, we just I feel like him and I we just we just clicked, man. Just it just I love working with Labar, and um he he's really well known in the media waves too. And uh funny story, so when I was at AEW in Pittsburgh, Mark Henry of all people came up to me and shook my hand. It was. I wasn't even expecting this. And Mark Henry was telling me, you know, I've heard great things from you from Labar. Keep working hard. You're going to make it. That was, I tell you what, man, that was an awesome, uh, uh, awesome moment right there. Having uh, the world's youngest man, Mark Henry, come up to you. That was, that was pretty cool. Absolutely, that man. Was a what, what, moment. Yeah, definitely. What What's it like getting, getting a kind of a, so an inspirational uh, piece of advice from a hero like that? 
to me, it's, it's, it's the validation to me. It's the validation knowing that, okay, you know what? Your hard work's starting to pay off. That's really what it is. I, oh, I, I couldn't imagine someone that you've watched on TV yeah. coming up and being like, I, I, I see what you're doing. You're on the right yeah. path. Like, because that when you're, when you're trying to achieve something, that's not just, you know, this isn't a normal thing. You know, you're trying <laughs> to achieve greatness and you see yep. some guy who's achieved that greatness yeah. validate that you're on the right path. That's yep. gotta be like, man, okay. I oh. am doing something right. Yeah, that was I mean, I that was that was a man, that was a great day at the office, as somebody would say. That was I remember driving home and I was like, Man, you know what? That was that was awesome. I mean, there's no other way to to say it other than and then it was just for me, it was just validation. It's just, you know, I know that that right there is telling me that hey Spencer Slade, you're doing the right thing. Whatever you're doing in the wrestling, you're doing the right thing. So that was awesome. What was it like working with uh big cast W Morrissey? Dude, I tell you what, man, that's a big dude. Holy crap. <laughs> There's no that guy is probably legit at least six foot ten, six foot eleven barefoot. I mean, he's the, the, that's a big dude. I mean, I, I'm a big dude. I'm about six two, six three, but he he's a lot bigger dude than me. I was <laughs> and he was super cool too. I mean, uh that was that was awesome. Cause I had wa you know, I had watched him obviously when he was with with a tag team with Enzo Amore. And yeah. I told the story too. So I actually watched an FCW show back in like 2012 when they were still down in Tampa doing FCW. Um, we were down there for like a family vacation. We stopped and watched FCW matches. And it was uh, when Big Cass first got there, he was in like a tag team, I think with Eric Rowan or something. And they were, just, yeah. I, I told him that story. He thought that was cool. You know, it was, uh, it was cool, man. That was, to me, main event that show against him once again. That was another validation thing. Okay, you know what? I'm doing something right. You know, I'm being managed by Justin Labar. I'm just just barely two years in now. I'm main event this big indie show. It's just when you're grinding, man, and you're putting that hard work in. Good things they just they just they, they just happen. Yeah, you, yeah. You can't really explain it. They just they just it, they just happen, and that's I mean, where. Yeah. Take, yeah. take, take a yeah. step back from, from, you know, you're, you're living it. So sometimes you're caught in the moment, but if you really take a step back and look at what you've accomplished, you started wrestling training in 2018. Yep. You, you, you've worked for AEW. You've got yep. Mark Henry taking notice of you, telling you you're on the right path. You're working with W Morrissey. You're yep. working in a very reputable independent promotion like IWC. Yep. You are laying the groundwork. Like it's only yep. a matter of time. Yeah, I know. And uh, that's another thing, too. You know, I, I obviously, you know, my whole goal is to get signed. I mean, that's how that's the definition of me of making it. You know, you want to get that. You want to get signed to be AEW, Ring of Honor, uh, whichever opportunity comes. Um, and that's a crazy thing, too, because pro wrestling, man, it's there's nothing else in this world like it, man. The amount of hard work that goes into it, because there's no offseason, you know. You got to be on top of your game 24-7, 365. You know, you got to be on top of your game in the ring, on your promos, on your looks, all that kind of stuff. And me, you know, I just, I know, you know, I know where I want to be. You know, the main event of WrestleMania, the, the TNT champion, the AEW champion. You know, I got my five, ten-year goals that I want to be. But um, in wrestling, you got to take it day by day, week by week, you know, month by month because, the wrestling business, like I said, is unlike anything out there. You know, you don't know what's going to come your way. So I just take it day by day, and I, whatever match that I'm booked for, I go out there and I steal the show. Absolutely, man. Oh, no, you know, back back to when you were when you started doing those shots in AEW. Yeah. What's the backstage environment like down there? What What was it like for you, just from an experience? <laughs> huge eye opener for me because I mean prior to that you know I had never been I've never been backstage to a big company before I was always that fan that was standing outside watching the wrestlers come in backstage that was me my whole life so I was obviously it was awesome being backstage I mean you're seeing I'm seeing a Jericho shaking hands with Jericho talking to Sting seeing Mark Henry I mean seeing you know Kenny Omega the Young Bucks all that kind of stuff and they're all just hanging out I mean it was such a it was such an awesome environment and that's what I that's what I fell in love about wrestling too. It's like you got all these people that love one thing, and that's pro wrestling. They're all coming together to kill it. I mean, that was a, that was the coolest part, you know. Did, I did almost you... had when it was time to fly home. I almost had tears in my eyes because I didn't want to go home because I had so <laughs> much fun down there, man. It was. I crazy. bet. 
because you don't get that kind of fun when you're in the, in the independence because, you know, it's my competition, the guys on TV, that's my competition. Those are the guys that, you know, I'm, I want to be around. I want to compete against. I want to take their spots, you know, but when you're on the independence, you know, you just, you're kind of just going there to, to, you know, have the best match, try to get seen by the right eyes so you can get signed. So, and also too, it's, it's, you know, it's a mil billion dollar, you know, company, big, big budget, you know, big production too, and all that crazy stuff, you know? So it was awesome. That's awesome. W was there any uh, particular moment you had down there where uh, someone maybe gave you a good piece of advice or, or, or you had an interaction with someone? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, the, uh, the best one I had was uh, with the uh, uh, hangman, hangman Adam page. One of I wrestled him on a dark elevation. I got in that. He, he was a super cool dude. I mean, he gave me all kind of advice, you know, told me to that look great, this kind of stuff. I mean, just talking to him like a normal wrestler. I mean, that was awesome. Talking to uh, Chris Jericho for a little bit, just uh, picking advice from him. I'm talking to uh, Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian. Oh, yeah. Uh, talking to Gold Dust, Cody Rhodes, uh, getting advice from them. I mean, this is stuff me as indie wrestler. I mean, you can't you can't buy this stuff. You just oh, have to priceless be good enough, or you just have to be at the right place at the right time for that kind of stuff. Yeah, man. Yeah, and they don't have like I said, those guys there. They don't have to give you advice if they don't want to, but they see something in me, so that's why they open up and give me this. Right. You know. Yeah, man. I I uh I love your winner's mentality. I I love yeah. the. I love the fact that you're what you're considering your competition, the guys who are on TV. Yeah, exactly. And that's, and, 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 and that's just, you know, and maybe I have a different mentality than most people, uh, most people around me, but I don't really look at it like that. I just look at, at is like, what am I thinking? You know, this is just who I am. This is just what I think. And if uh, there's people out there don't think the same way they had that pessimistic mentality, you know, that's fine. You know, that's, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's their wrestling crew. They do whatever they want with it. But I always know in the back of my mind, obviously I said it a thousand times. I know where I want to be. I'm not there right now. And that's why I wake up every single day and train and do what I got to do. Cause like I said, you know, I know where I want to be. And you have to, you have to have that mentality too. Cause you gotta be, you gotta be optimistic. You gotta believe in yourself. Cause if, especially in a wrestling business where nothing's guaranteed, you really, really, really have to, really uh really have to put a vision as to where you want to be yeah it's that visualize man visualize your success and you know exactly. the the pma the positive mental attitude and there's a, there's another thing too um you know because i obviously listen to chris jericho's podcast i've listened to every single episode ever since he had it in like 2012 or 2013 and i always recall this moment it was an interview he did with uh seth rollins and Seth Rollins was talking about how when he was first coming up in the independence, how a lot of guys were thinking that he was cocky and arrogant. And he was talking about how, you know, he always knew where he wanted to be. You know, he wanted to, he said he had to main event those indie shows. He had to work the names. He had to get signed. He had to have that mentality of, uh, I know where I want to be and nobody's going to prevent me from getting there, you know? And so I always stuck with that. Cause you know, you look at a guy like Seth Rollins, you know, if, if, if he started the, the bottom and now he's at the very top i mean you have to you have to have that mentality of uh of of, uh, of uh, being confident knowing where you want to be and to be successful in wrestling yeah man and that's such a good like guys like that have laid the map you know everyone has a different journey but but looking at guys like that and how they did it i feel like that's very important for independent wrestlers in in there in, in in my opinion in in today's society too because I talk to a lot of independent wrestlers I mean I don't I've never really done a seminar yet but I give a lot of advice because people ask for it but I tell them you know there is no reason why in today's day and age why you can't be the best wrestler because a you have all the resources in the world to succeed go to a gym diet you got the you got WB Network, you or, or you got Peacock now. You got matches on YouTube. There should be no reason why you're not getting all those mental reps by watching matches. That's what you learn, you know. Yeah. You watch. I mean, you can learn so much by <clears throat> watching a wrestling match. I mean, it's but what it comes down to is once again how bad do you really want it? How much are you willing to sacrifice in pro wrestling to get to where you want to go? You know, so you got to make that choice. I got. I got. No why? Yeah. 
yeah. There's so many people out there that can make you professional looking gear. You don't have to dress in a t-shirt and baggy jeans. Like make the investment in yourself too. Those are all those, those are all things that you can control. I love it. Being being from you know a- athletic background, I just gotta ask. I I just want to see. I'm sure you watch game tape. How yep. many hours are you watching matches a week? <laughs> so <laughs> I uh I try to watch um every single day. I tell myself I will try to watch at least three to four matches a day. Obviously on like. Um, like, like on a Saturday, like a show day, obviously it'll probably just, just be one or two because I have a show and I'm kind of just focusing on me. And then on like a, on a Sunday, I'll just binge, binge watch on Peacock <laughs> the entire day, you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then obviously now, if like, um, I watch, even like now, even from like late tonight after this, I'll just be on Peacock watching matches. I mean, I've watched every single Kurt Angle match. I've watched every single Randy Orton match. I mean, I've watched every single main event takeover NXT match. I mean, I, I've i watched so many matches to where I can literally memorize the entire match that certain guys have. And also, too, that's a great thing, too. When you study film and you're putting together a wrestling match, too, there's no reason why you can't put together a great match because all these guys before us have already laid the groundwork for us. So if you see a cool false finish on, 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 on a match, Watch it. Plug your stuff in, and you're, and then, and then you got yourself a cool part of a match. I mean, it's, it's, that's what I really do now. Is I, is I study the big endings of matches so I can start getting ideas because I'm always thinking of ideas. Absolutely, man. It's game you know? tape. You're put. You're putting the work in. Exactly. So for for our fans who may not know who Spencer Slade is, let Absolutely. the people know. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, and that's okay if you don't know who I am. That means that uh, obviously right now I have not, I have not made my name big enough to where everybody knows, and that's okay. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm still grinding. I'm, but I, but I tell you what, here, hopefully by the end of this year you'll know who Spencer Slade is because I'm gonna make sure that I pop up in either Dynamite or NXT by the end of this year, and that's been a personal goal of mine to try to get signed by the end of this year. Um, but Spencer Slade, he's, he's. He's simply, you know, one of you, somebody that had a dream, that had a goal, didn't let his hearing disability stop him. When he steps foot in that ring, he uh, fights for that eight-year-old kid that got picked on his whole life. He's an aggressive, athletic, technical wrestler that fears no man. And at the end of the day, when his hand is raised in victory, my opponent will fear the gear. I love it, man. Just got a promo there for you. Yeah, I love it. I love it, man. And. And I have no doubt that by the end of the year, that's going to happen. You that's were, goal, man. That's it's 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 it's, it's uh, you know, like I said, you just you just got to be patient. It is what it is. Um, and I'm 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 big on goals. You know, it's just you gotta you gotta see where you want to be. Well, look, man, you were a you were a football player that wanted to be a professional wrestler. Yep. So you went and did that. Now you're a professional wrestler that wants to be signed to a company. Exactly. That's the next thing. It's going to happen. Exactly. That's exactly. And I, I appreciate you guys' support. You know, I, I obviously love people. You know, I love when uh, when uh, when people support. It means the world. And I also I also love it even more when people you know don't support you because those are the people that. Oh you know, yeah. I'm gonna yep. be giving a uh, free comp tickets to. Hey, yeah, you remember when you had doubted me? Yeah, you know what? Here's a free ticket to Monday Night Raw. <laughs> yeah, you sit front row and watch me do what you told me I couldn't do. That's the best part. You know. That's a good feeling. Want to keep it positive though. <laughs> yeah. So before we let you go, though, we have one question that we always like to end on. Absolutely. Ask me anything. The pandemic's over. You're making towns. You have three wrestlers, alive or dead, that can be in the car with you making those towns. What? So when you're talking any wrestler, like like any promotion. Any, any wrestler, wrestler, any promotion, alive or dead, making those towns with you, who's in your car? I would have to. <laughs> I would have to put Randy Orton. I would put Randy Orton in my car. Um, I would put um, Kurt Angle or two, those two guys. Ooh. And then a third guy um, that he's obviously passed away, but would be Harley Race. Awesome. Oh, yeah. I would love, oh, I would love to pick his brain, hear his stories. Those would oh, be my three guys. That's a car full of killers, man. <laughs> I, know, <right? laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, well, Spencer, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. We had a blast Absolutely. talking to you. Absolutely, I like I said, man. I, I, uh, 
I, I'm so appreciative if we can finally, uh, finally do this and uh, get to talk to you guys. And obviously, yeah. you know, I would love to maybe by the end of this year when I'm signed, sealed, and delivered to a major company, I would love to come back on in the future and talk about what I've experienced these past year or so. Uh, I, but like I said, you guys ever want to reach out? You guys got my social media. And, uh, don't ever hesitate to reach out if you ever need anything and want to see what I'm up to. I'm always trying to post stuff on social media. So I hope to stay in contact with you guys. Absolutely, yeah, man. So let everybody know where they can find you on social media so Absolutely. they can follow the journey. You can find me on uh, on uh, right here on Twitter at Slade Wrestler. You can find me on Instagram at Slade Wrestling. You can find me on Facebook at Spencer Slade. You can find me on YouTube where I post all my matches at Spencer Slade. Uh, those are the four areas that you can find me. And then you can find my, my uh, gear. Uh, if you want to buy a T-shirt, you go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash Fear the Gear. And you got me right there. Awesome, man. Well, and we look I'm forward gonna, to having then, you back on. And I'm going to go ahead and call it by the end of the year. You can find him on either AEW or WWE, NWA or Impact. It'll, it'll, it's going to happen. Yeah, it's happening. Hey, man, like I said, I appreciate you guys uh, saying that for me, and I'll make sure that I hold by the bargain and make that happen. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, have have a great night. We look forward awesome. to all your success, hey, man. You. Yeah, once again, guys, thank you so much for having me on. Please stay in touch.